Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to the online uh, tutorial on linear control systems theory uh, today we are going to discuss transfer functions of electrical circuits and the key point that you need to understand uh, for uh, being able to develop transfer functions for electrical circuits is these three impedance transfer functions for the three main elements in any electrical circuits so what do we have in electrical circuits a resistor capacitor inductor these are the three main ingredients of any electrical circuits so you have to understand that a resistor has some resistance capacitor has some capacitance uh, let's say resistor has resistance r capacitor has capacitance c and inductor has inductance l so what we need to understand is what is the transfer function of the impedance of all these all of these three components so what is v of s over i of s so i hope all of you remember the ohm's law uh, v is equal to i r actually the ohm law and all the electric circuit laws uh, do work in laplace domain as well and we are assuming zero initial conditions so in all our uh, calculations uh, we will assume that capacitor is initially zero have zero charge and inductor has initially zero uh, current stored in it so under zero initial conditions the v over i uh, in laplace domain or in frequency domain for a resistor it is equal to r for a capacitor it is equal to 1 over c into s and for an inductor it is equal to l multiplied by s where l is the inductance of the inductor c is the capacitance of the capacitor and r is the resistance of a resistor so what does that mean what does uh, what is the meaning of uh, the transfer function of an impedance of a component and how do we use it to find the transfer function of let's say this rlc circuit by the way this rlc circuit has been taken from the norman s nice uh, book on control systems uh, it is a very nice book you should uh, study that book if you really want to get a grip on control systems theory uh, so this circuit can be translated into a an lti system with this transfer function so an lti system a system that has an input and an output in this case we select v of s this is a laplace domain of this voltage this is v sub t v of t this is time domain voltage signal and this is the corresponding laplace domain uh, frequency form of this signal and then v sub c is the laplace transform of this voltage across this capacitor uh, which we in this case are uh, taking as the output voltage so the transfer function between the input voltage and the output voltage is this thing so the question is how do we get this transfer function and the answer i will explain the answer in the next slide but i just give away the main thing i will use these three uh, pieces of information in order to derive this transfer function from this circuit so let's see how i do that so this is the circuit and this is the transfer function that i derive i i will drive for this circuit so first of all uh, v c over v the ratio of laplace transform of output over input that is this transfer function and this is equal to uh, you can uh, equate it with simple mathematics that this is equal v sub c over v is equal to v sub c over i multiplied by i over v why do i write this uh, voltage ratio in terms of voltage current ratios because i am going to use the laplace transforms of the impedances of all three components so for example v over i v over i is the total impedance in the circuit because this voltage v is the same voltage that is uh, like draw uh, this voltage v is the sum of voltage drop across all of these three series elements so this v over i is basically equal to the total impedance of the circuit that is uh, present here 
so the what is the total impedance uh, the inductor the impedance of the inductor the what is the transfer function of the impedance of inductor l times s plus series element r uh, the transfer function of the impedance of a resistor is constant r then plus series element capacitor what is the transfer function of the impedance of a capacitor that is 1 over c into s so this is the total impedance we just take c into s as lcm and this is the simplified uh, relationship so i have done nothing i have just uh, applied the ohms law v over i is equal to total impedance in the circuit and that's all then what is i over v because we will we are going to need i over v in order to calculate v c over v here so i over v is simply you flip flip this uh, ratio and you get i over v next what is v c over i so v c is the voltage drop across this capacitor only so the 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 ohm law for the voltage drop across this capacitor only would be vc over i would be the the impedance of the capacitor only so what is the impedance of capacitor 1 over c into s and now we are ready to calculate vc over v because we have vc over i and i over v so multiplying these two 1 over cs into cs over this whole thing you multiply you get this and you divide the whole equation by uh, lc so divide and uh, the whole equation uh, the whole uh, ratio so divide by lc in the numerator and divide by lc in the denominator uh, you will get s square 1 over lc divided by s square so in the next slide i will explain why why do we need to i mean we don't need to uh, simplify this into this form but there is a reason why i have done this uh, and the reason is that because i want to go further i want to go beyond just uh, obtaining the transfer function from a circuit i want to uh, go into how to determine its properties as well so we compare the transfer function that we obtained for an, for an rlc circuit with the standard second order transfer function so uh, there is a lecture in the con linear control systems uh, course on the standard second order uh, transfer functions actually there are two lectures one is related to the time domain characteristics and the other is related to the frequency domain characteristics i'm not going to revise all the uh, material covered in those lectures but once you compare this rlc circuit transfer function with the standard form you realize that the natural frequency of the rlc circuit is square root of 1 over lc and the damping ratio of the rlc circuit is 1 half r times square root of c over l so once you get the damping ratio and natural frequency of this rlc circuit you can calculate many things for example you can calculate the bandwidth of the circuit and uh, this bandwidth formula i have uh, copied this from the lecture on frequency domain analysis of second order systems or frequency domain analysis of uh, feedback control systems uh, so this is the formula of bandwidth in terms of natural frequency and damping ratio once you know the damping ratio and natural frequency in terms of r l and c components you can calculate the bandwidth of the circuit and you can also adjust the bandwidth of the circuit by adjusting the values of r l and c parameters and similarly from this these equations have been taken from the uh, time domain uh, performance specification of second order systems lecture and in that lecture i have uh, uh, presented many formulas for second order system for example the formula for percentage overshoot the formula for delay time which is presented here and formula for rise time and also the formula for peak time etc so the the summary or the main point is that you can calculate all the properties of rlc circuit uh, once you calculate its transfer function in the form of its parameters next we look at uh, the operational amplifier so for operational amplifier has been very commonly used for control system circuit 
implementation in the in the past before the microcontrollers were uh, very common uh, because uh, using operational amplifiers uh, many PID PD and other controllers were designed and uh, but after microcontrollers there is uh, no need as such for uh, operational amplifier unless somebody insists on analog type controllers uh, right now digital controllers you can just write a program of a PID controller inside microcontroller and you can have your uh, control feedback control in the implement uh, implemented in your actual project but uh, in the past uh, people used to design these circuits using operational amplifiers um, so for an operational amplifier the ratio between output voltage uh, laplace transform of the output voltage and the laplace transform of the input voltage is which is the transfer function of the operational amplifier it is z2 over z1 where z2 is the impedance or uh, here the output impedance and z1 is the input impedance of the operational amplifier so z1 and z2 can be any series or parallel combination of r l and c uh, we we just saw that all the circuit rules including kcl kvl ohm law apply in the laplace domain as well so we should have no problem in calculating z1 and z2 uh, if these are any series or parallel combinations of r l and c i will just show you one example for example let's suppose we have this type of operational amplifier circuit where z1 is the parallel combination of a capacitor and, and, and a resistor resistor is a 360 kilo ohm capacitor is 5.6 microfarad and z2 is the series combination of a resistor and a capacitor where resistor is 220 kilo ohm and capacitor is 0.1 microfarad so how do we do that uh, here z1 is a parallel combination so it will be 1 over uh, this is the inverse of the uh, impedance of uh, a capacitor and this is the inverse of uh, impedance of a resistor so this is how you solve parallel combination of uh, impedance elements so once you take the lcm and simplify this will become uh, 360,000 divided by 2.016 s plus 1 and then this is your z1 so if it were any more complicated uh, series or parallel combination you could still do it with simple skills of uh, circuit analysis uh, and then similarly z2 is a series combination so in series we add the impedances so we add the impedance of r2 with the impedance of c2 and then we uh, get this uh, expression for z2 and finally v out over v in that is z2 over z1 when we uh, multiply uh, when we take ratio of z2 over z1 and multiply things out then we get this transfer function this is the transfer function for this operational amplifier and notice that this this transfer function is very similar to the transfer function of a pid controller so basically this is how you, uh, people used to implement pid controller uh, in the past using operational amplifiers and you can adjust the gains of uh, derivative uh, proportional and integral gain uh, using uh, by adjusting the values of c2 r2 c1 and r1 so by so this is um, uh, how you get the transfer functions for electrical circuits and really I, I, I want to emphasize it uh, um, with great uh, I would say intensity that all of these calculations come from just this table once you are comfortable with the fact that impedance of a resistor in laplace domain is a constant r impedance of a capacitor is 1 over cs and impedance of an inductor is l times s then you can do all types of circuit analysis techniques and calculate the transfer functions between different uh, signals within the uh, circuit and uh, circuit can be an rlc circuit it could have you can even solve the circuits with uh, multiple loops uh, you can do mesh analysis uh, you can do everything all you have to do is uh, replace uh, the resistor with a constant r replace the capacitor with 1 over c into s and replace the inductor 
with l times s so hopefully this was a uh, useful for you um, let me know if you have any further questions uh, thank you for watching this video